We're ready to finish our worksheet now uh, for the p-values. Here we're going to do t-tests. I had some errors on the worksheet that I've fixed magically uh, between videos. So, um, so the values are a little bit different than they were before. I'll fix the handout before it even appears on Canvas so you would have never known if I didn't write in with my hand here. Um, uh, these handwritten values here, s is 6 and mu is 19. I originally had sigma there, but this is a t-test. So again, remember with a t-test, you do not know sigma. You can only know the sample standard deviation. Okay, so that's the reason for the change there. And then I made these values a little bit, um, I made mu naught, uh, those values a little bit more reasonable. Anyways, so what we have is we have a sample with 20, um, the sample uh, mean is 20. We have 32 data points. The sample standard deviation is six. And then we're trying to figure out whether the mean, the population mean, is equal to 19 or greater than 19. And so again, we have two different tests here. We can do the critical value approach or the p-value approach. Uh, either way, we're going to need to compute our test statistic, t naught. And in the, for example number 6, this is going to be uh, 20. So it's going to be our sample mean minus mu naught, which is 19, over... Um, S, which is 6, divided by square root of n, so square root of 32. And it turns out if we plug this into the calculator, we're going to end up with 0 0.9428. Uh, Again, just to go to four decimal places. So this is our t value, and uh, that's what we're going to need first. And then for our critical value approach, uh, what we need to do is figure out what are the critical values. So we can either look at our table, uh, which is an absolutely fine method for this. So if you look at the table, um, so I'm talking about the Z table uh, in the T table. Um, if you look up, uh, you just need to remember exactly what value to look up. This is a 5% significance test. Uh, the mean is to the right. Okay, so we're looking up T's of 0 0.05 and we want the positive value. Okay, that's the part that we need to think about. So if we look at t uh, sub 0 0.05, okay, it turns out that this value with 31 degrees of freedom, um, so it turns out that this value with 31 degrees of freedom is going to be 1.696. So it's going to be equal to, this is an equal sign. I should probably rewrite that. Okay, so this is really just 1.696. Okay, that's our critical value. Um, so our test statistic that we found was 0.9428. That's going to lie somewhere over here. Okay, so that is uh, not in the rejection region. This is uh, here we fail to reject. So our critical value was, just to recap, our critical value was T sub 0 0.05, again with 31 degrees of freedom. And that was 1.696. Our actual test statistic, t naught, uh, it was equal to 0 0.9428. It's a right-tailed test uh, since our test statistic is not larger than um, our critical value. That means that we fail to reject. Okay, so that's our conclusion here. We fail to reject. And that's the first way to do it. The other way to do it is with p-values. So to compute the p-values, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um, just appeal to r. And what we can do with the p-values, um, there's a few different ways to do it. If I let t be our value, um, so if you want to do this all in r, this is totally fine. What you would do is you would let t be your value, 20 minus 19 over 6 divided by square root of 32 you would get 0 0.942089, and then R stops, okay? Um, and so if you save that value as T, then what you can do to get the P value uh, is you can just do uh, 1 minus PT of T with 31 degrees of freedom, okay? So this is telling you the p-value, the probability that our data is at least as extreme as the sample that we actually have. Um, and it turns out that this is going to be 0 0.176, 0 0.176.
0.1765. Okay, P is larger than our significance uh, alpha. Um, so again, we uh, fail to reject. And by the way, if we do this on a calculator, there's no reason why we have to save T like this. We could have also taken this value, this 1 minus PT value, and we could have also computed, let me just add in one other way to do this, you could have also computed just 1 minus PT of our test statistic that we had, 0 0.9428, 0 0.9428. Uh, and if you do that, you'll get the same thing. Okay, maybe the 10,000th place will be off by uh, one or two values, but, uh, but you'll get more or less the same thing. Okay, again, the, the difference there is just a rounding error. In either case, we fail to reject, and we are done. So for our last example of the worksheet, uh, we have a random sample with um, a sample mean of 12, 40 data points, standard deviation of 4. We want to check whether the population mean is equal to 14 or not equal to 14, and we're going to use the t-test, again, because we don't know the population standard deviation. So what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, we're going to mimic what we did before, but we need to keep in mind that this is a two-tailed test. And again, we know it's a two-tailed test because of our alternative hypothesis. If the alternative hypothesis is that mu is not equal to something, it's two-tailed. If the alternative hypothesis is that mu is greater than or less than whatever our value is, then it's a one-tailed test. So here we have to worry about. So just remember what this means is that we have to worry about. When we worry about our data being more extreme than, so when we worry about a random sample being more extreme than our data, um, we have to think about more extreme to the left or more extreme to the right. And so we're going to take our 5% significance and we're going to uh, figure out what are the values where uh, alpha is 0.05, so this is going to be t sub 0 0.025, and negative t sub 0 0.025. Okay, those are going to be our critical values. Uh, and so since I'm already on this topic, let's just figure out what are the critical values. And you can do this again uh, using your um, T distribution table. So we're going to look up T sub 0 0.025. That's the middle column. We have 40 data points. So that means that we're looking at 39 degrees of freedom. And that means that our critical values uh, are going to be... Oops, our critical values are going to be T sub 0 0.025, so plus or minus, uh, which are going to be plus or minus 2 point, I lost it already, 2.023. Okay, so those are going to be our critical values there. We still have to figure out what our test statistic is. So we still have to go back and we're going to compute T naught which is going to be 12 minus 14 over uh, S, which is 4, divided by square root of 40. And it turns out when we plug this in, if you uh, actually calculate it, you end up with T being negative 3.1623. And so uh, that's our actual test statistic. Uh, these are the values 2.023 and negative 2.023, it turns out that our test statistic is in the rejection region, so we'll reject the null hypothesis. Okay, that's our conclusion there. We'll reject the null hypothesis. And again, one more time, just with p-values. So if we do the p-value approach, what we're going to do is we're going to compute our p-value. And again, remember with the p-value is that this is a two-tailed test. So you have to figure out What's the probability that a random sample is at least, uh, what's the probability of a random sample being more extreme than your specific sample? Um, and so you have to calculate this probability over here. So from your test statistic over, and likewise from the uh, positive value of the test statistic, right, the other value, just by symmetry. And so what we'll do is we'll take uh, two times... Uh, the cumulative probability up to our test statistic. So that's going to be 2 times um, PT, because this is a T test. Of You can either um, 
you can either compute this value as t and then take that value okay and plug it in uh, or uh, what you can do is just um, again you might get a few rounding errors it won't be a big deal though you can just take your test statistic negative 3.1623 it's already negative so you don't have to change anything um, but since we're talking about cumulative probability, you always use the negative value for the two-tailed test. So that's going to be negative 3.1623. And if we compute that p-value, uh, let's see, if we plug that into r, we're going to end up with uh, 0. <clears throat> 0. Uh, 0.0030. Okay, and uh, here our p-value is definitely less than alpha, so we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, that is hypothesis testing. I want to point out that the p-value approach is somewhat difficult if you do not have technology available. So the sheet that we have that has our uh, z-table and t-table on it does not have all the values. It's not like the standard normal distribution where it has many of the values. All it has is the cutoffs, t sub 0 0.1, t sub 0 0.05, uh, 0 0.025, 0 0.01, and 0 0.005. It's just got those five values. So if you are looking for a p-value using the table, you can't actually get it. All you can say is, uh, you can say it's in a certain range. So what I mean by that is that if you were to look at negative, uh, if you were to look at 3.1623 uh, somewhere on the chart corresponding to 39 degrees of freedom, um, you know that it's larger than, so your value t sub 0 0.05, this is just worth writing, I think. So if you have t sub, so here n is 40, our degrees of freedom is 39. If you look at t sub, uh, let me just copy down the chart so we don't have to think about the whole thing here. Um, but for uh, 39 degrees of freedom, uh, 39, you're going to have uh, your values. So t sub 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.025, 0 0.01, 0 0.005. So if you're to look at those values in the column... Um, in the, um, whatever, the column and row corresponding to D equals, uh, DF equals 39. Your row would be, again, if we're looking at 39, this is 1.304. Uh, and then 1.685. Uh, 2.023, that's the value that we used above. Um, 2.426. And 2.708. So if you have a test statistic that is negative uh, 3.1623, remember that with the t distribution, you don't look at the cumulative probability. You look at uh, 1 minus the cumulative probability. So really, we want positive 3.1623. That's the value that we're looking at. And so 3.1623 is larger than all of those values. And so what that means is that since our value is larger than all those values, our associated p-value must be smaller than all of these probabilities. And indeed it is, right? It's a little bit uh, less than 0 0.005 because 3.16 is a little bit more than 2.708. So again, if you only have the z-distribution table and the t-distribution table, you can never calculate p-values explicitly. All you can do is give a range for the p-values. But often that's enough. Okay, often that's enough. All right, more.